Editors No Day Longer version of this article appears in the fall issue of Thinking Minnesota, a publication of the Center of the American Experiment. For years, the Adena Public Schools EPS have been one of the brightest stars in the firmament of Minnesota public education. Parents who moved to the affluent Twin Cities suburb gladly paid a hefty premium for a house because it meant their kids could attend the district's top-notch schools. But today, test scores are sinking in Adena's fabled schools. One in five Adena high school students can't read at grade level and one in three can't do grade level math. These test results dropped EHS's ranking among Minnesota high schools from 5th to 29th in reading proficiency, and from 10th to 40th in math proficiency between 2014 and 2017. Across the district, about 30% of kids are not on track for success in reading, and the same is true for math. A number of factors may be at work here. Clearly, however, there's been a profound shift in district leaders' educational philosophy. In place of academic excellence for all, the district's primary mission is now to ensure that students think correctly on social and political issues, most importantly, on race and white privilege. District leaders enshrined this new mission in EPS's All for All strategic plan, adopted in 2013. The plan mandates that, going forward, the EPS must view all teaching and learning experiences through the lens of racial equity. If equity meant treating kids equally, all thinking Minnesotans would support it. In this context, however, its code for racial identity politics, a simplistic blaming of white privilege for the racial learning gap and any other problems that minority populations experience. The All for All plan mandates sweeping change to how education is delivered in Adena. For example, it dictates that, from now on, the district will hire racially conscious teachers and administrators. It also declares that students must acquire an awareness of their own cultural identity and value racial, cultural and ethnic diversities. In education speak, this means that Adena children will now be instructed that their personal, cultural identity is irrevocably tied to their skin color. This directly rejects the colorblind vision that the Rev. Martin Luther King Jr. pioneered, and that the vast majority of Americans share. Highlands Elementary School is a prime example of the All for All plan in action. The school is pervaded by an obsession with race, in classrooms, at parent meetings, and on its wonder blog and social media. Katie Mahoney, Highlands' racially conscious principal, was hired in 2016. This fall, she announced that the school's challenges for 201,718 are to teach children how to embrace ancestry, genetic code and melanin, and to how to be changemakers. Work on the first goal began last year with the Melanin Project. The school's youngest students K2 traced their hands, colored them with their skin color, and made a poster reading Stop thinking your skin color is better than everyone else is sick. Everyone is special educators have no business prompting immature and impressionable children to classify themselves and others by skin color. But Mahoney's political agenda seems much broader. For example, on the school's Wonder blog, she has promoted an ABC book for young children entitled A is for Activist. The book features texts like the following Are you an activist? C is for Creative counter to corporate vultures, F is for feminist, T is for trans, and X is for Malcolm X. Cornelia Elementary School also has a racially conscious principal, Lisa Masika, hired in 2014. Masika began her tenure by obtaining a race-oriented social justice curriculum for the school with standards like unpacking identity and unpacking action. She floods the school's K-5 teachers with equity-related resources, like a video featuring a black slam poet denouncing police brutality. Unfortunately, from 201,517, the reading proficiency of Cornelia's students who are black, Hispanic, and of two or more races dropped from 58% to 34% on the state's MCAAI tests. At Adena High School, racial identity politics are the leading edge of an agenda that includes an angry, malabashing feminism and left-wing calls to activism in classrooms, school publications and school assemblies. On the Rate My Professor website, one disenchanted student said of the school's required 10th grade English course this class should be renamed. Why white males are bad, and how oppressive they are, EHS students describe a culture of intimidation at the school for students with non-conforming views. The lockstep step partisanship they complain of was on display after the 2016 elections, when 80 staff members all but a handful of whom were teachers co-signed a partisan manifesto in the student newspaper bashing President-elect Donald Trump as a racist and aligning themselves with the Democratic Party and Hillary Clinton. Many of you students have made clear that right now, you don't feel physically safe, the article read. Know that we will do all that we can to fight for you and that we will teach rebellion against a broken world.
EHS policy prohibits partisan bias by teachers, but the teacher charged with keeping it out of the school paper herself signed the editorial. On August 24, 2017, Peter Kersenow, a member of the U.S. Commission on Civil Rights, wrote to the chair of the Adena School Board about this and other recent incidents at Adena High School. He admonished the board about teachers' discrimination against and bullying of students with different political beliefs, and reminded them that federal civil rights law prohibits such discrimination in public schools. In a response dated September 21, EPS Superintendent John Schultz essentially acknowledged that the high school has failed to meet its First Amendment obligations. Since receipt of Kersenow's letter, he wrote, the district has invited a team of attorneys to conduct training on employee and student free speech rights and limitations, which was attended by administrators and all high school staff. Today, Adina students are being deprived of their right to a solid education by teachers and administrators who substitute indoctrination and intimidation for effective instruction. It's time for Adina's citizens to demand that changes. Catherine Kersen is a senior policy fellow at the Center of the American Experiment. She is at cackerston at gmail.com.